Before we start the actual painting, I'm going to show you a technique here just to make sure the paper doesn't buckle at all. So I'm using some masking tape and I'm going to place it all around the edge and fold it down over the other pages. And this is just a handy way to use the watercolor book when you're painting watercolor to avoid any buckling of the paper. And it also creates a nice frame around the picture. So if you do decide to frame it at a later stage, it's handy for that, or it may just look nice in your book, but you'll see that at the end of the demonstration. So now we go on to preparing the paper and I'm going to start off with a wash using some cadmium deep yellow or a similar color in your watercolor palette and just use um, a mop brush like I'm doing here or a large um, synthetic brush and do a warm wash. I like doing warm wash it seems to um, aid the painting process and then the tree line just a bit of um, ultramarine blue and then the foreground is going to be warmer so a bit of a yellowish green and I'm up I'm lifting some color in the foreground where the farm dam is going to be situated so just lightening that up a bit bringing a bit more ultramarine blue into the tree line That'll be the darkest dark element of the painting. Just getting a bit of a start with that dark element. And then where the mountains are going to go, also a secondary dark. And just a bit of muddy color, really. A bit of uh, ultramarine thrown in there as well. Blues and we'll work over that with the pastel coming up. So let that dry completely and then we'll start the next stage. So here's the dry base of the painting and going straight into the sky now with um, some white pastel. So with the warm wash underneath I avoid having a cold sky even though this is really a winter country scene it is quite sunny nevertheless um, so the warm wash keeps the sky from being too cold it does help with the the general mood of the painting as you can see I'm making spaces and leaving spaces between the strokes so that I can come back in with subsequent layers and here I'm using a brush just to dry brush and blend the colors a little I don't want to get any um, moisture into this at this stage and then going over that again with some white and gradually the scar will take shape I'll come back to it a few times as well. I'm getting a bit of grey in there which is sort of the tops of the mountain into the clouds. It's definitely going to have a soft edge appearance so but now into the hills and there's some warmth in those hills but I have to push them back as well so I'll start off with some of the warmer colors sort of yellow ochre and um, darkish greens. Go over that with cooler atmospheric colors. Um, it's a sort of a grayish purple color. And bring in some light blue. And now with a, a dark blue pastel, trying to get in the dark shapes into those mountains. So some structure is necessary. 
although I do want to keep these mountains quite atmospheric um, some mist some vapor in short the mountains need to be pushed back substantially a bit of purple and I just need to get that in and then I can blend it in a little in this case I'm just going to use my finger and just push it around a bit soften the edges merge those colors don't overdo it but just enough to suggest um, hills receding into the distance and then in this area a bit of a foreground so it'll be a bit warmer some blues to bring up some cool receding color blend that in a little bit more So as you can see with pastels, it's all about putting some color in and blending it. It's very impressionistic in this case, um, where you go over with, and there's an element of optical blending as well, not just um, physical blending. A bit of light blue into the top of this sky and I think the sky is pretty much taking shape now and I'm kind of happy with it. There's almost a suggestion of snow as well on the top of the hills. I'm going to merge that a little into the sky by bringing some of the blue down into that as well. But um, into the hills now that are coming forward but nevertheless they mustn't come forward too much. This will all um, work and, and read more correctly once the middle ground darks come into it. But um, the hills are an important part of the framing of this painting, so cool colors have got to come in over those warms. And then you're creating a very realistic optical illusion of space and distance and atmosphere. Very nice blue, this a bit of purpley blue that is cool but it's not cold. The so last bit of white into that sky and now into the foreground. Here I'm using some pastels made by Unison and uh, a lovely dark green which I need to get that dark tree line in so squinting at the reference and getting those dark shapes established quite quickly and abstractly I would say not really fussing about details And now with a lighter sort of yellowish green getting the touches of sunlight into those trees some light coming through so I'm thinking about the what's behind those trees as well and you can see it in the reference that the suggestion of light behind it is very important to emphasize the illusion of space to break up the dark shapes as well touches of orange into those dark greens i think will help as well 
they work against those blues into the distance a bit of vibrancy and energy comes into the painting as well So we build up layers of colour, very simply um, established and as I proceed I then pull it all together with the darks again. First off getting some blue under these trees to bring in the shadows. Very important to have these shadows to bind or hold the shapes down onto the landscape as it were. And now starting to bring some of those darks in. Just jab it, push it, pull it, get it in there. Few nice touches of warm yellow on the edges. The edges are fairly soft on the trees where the light is, is hitting the trees. That's from the our right to left. Just re-establish those shapes and by bringing in the negative shapes of light behind the trees you help to create positive shapes in the form of tree trunks or suggestions of tree trunks. Right now with a sort of dark blue, re-establishing some of the darks in those trees just to pull it all together. Now those trees are taking shape and starting to read correctly so I'll move into the middle ground where we bring in our light filled grass, some bright yellow, also leaving plenty of spaces between the strokes where other colours can be merged in. But the foreground, middle ground is predominantly light middle values. So mostly light middle value colour, bringing some deep yellow now. Now the middle ground in front of those trees, I will have to cool that down a little. So I'm bringing in a bit of green here and this helps to make the landscape merge into the distance. So the cool will push the landscape down a bit and then the warms right in the foreground will lift it up and you get a, a more receding or natural looking landscape. Breaking it up though, I don't want flat plain or pl flat hard surfaces. These dark little shapes suggesting the muddy banks or muddy parts of the little farm dam also bring them into the landscape. They are there anyway. But these little dark accents are very important when you've got a predominantly large shape with light color. The dark accents help a lot to create points of interest. Now some of that sky reflecting into parts of the water. A few highlights in there. The main idea is just to make the water read correctly so when you look at it you get the impression of water. 
don't worry about it too much. Um, water is really just a series of colors as well. Colors of different value and temperature. That's all the painting is. Bit more darker brown marks here and there, giving a bit of structure. A few more highlights. And we're pretty much getting to the conclusion of this painting. As you can see, a small painting like this can carry off quite a large subject. It's all about suggesting shapes, not sweating over the details. Just a few more dark shapes there, just to strengthen a few of those. Final touch in the sky. Always stand back and have a look at your painting from across the room and you'll see things that might need some attention. Some very bright touches now, just for a few accent highlights. And there we are. Now let's take off the tape and reveal the completed painting. And I'm generally quite happy with this. It's got a sense of the landscape, done very simply. Start off with your watercolor base, go over it with a few layers of pastel, and you've got quite a nice little study. Sign it off with pencil, and we're done. I'm quite happy with this actually, and the paper worked very well and also happy with those pastels.